we did this. So go ahead and you're going to be there to get Gagati for Facebook and we'll be back. So let's get to the point for today. Uh, today it's, we're going to talk about 10 simple ways to grow your podcast, the exact marketing strategy, literally you can copy and paste it. And then how to really support for social good, not just for social media, because at the end of the day, giving back is the most important. Uh, come on in, come on in, have a seat, no problem. So you're probably like, why should I even listen to you? Well, my name is Alicia Sanchez, and I am the founder of the Dear God Are We There Yet nonprofit. It's a volunteer community, and we do all these fabulous things that I'm not going to mention, but you can read it off the screen because you guys can read. Um, but I'm here because I'm like a matchmaker.com for uh, nonprofits. I connect causes and communities through the power of volunteering. Basically, you'll see me on reels trying to be like, go volunteer, be kind, <laughs> do something good for the world. That's literally me, okay? Um, but we're going to get into it, the top 10. Number one, social relevance. We all have podcasts in here. And sometimes we're trying to wonder, like, how can we connect with people? How can we connect with our different audiences? Social relevance, I've seen that a lot of nonprofits are connecting with podcasts to say, hey, I don't know how to talk about this. But can you come in and be on my podcast and talk about this, something that's really either uncomfortable, something that I'm not too sure of, but something that my audience might want to hear. You know, we know we live in a world. We know there's a lot of things going on in the world. And sometimes our listeners, they're people just like us. They might not want to hear the, they might want to pause. They might want you to reflect on what's happening in the world. And so this is a great way to get non-profits um, on your podcast to say, hey, come on and talk about this subject. Your listeners, I promise you, are going to be like, wow, you took the moment to not only talk about something that's happening in the world, but it's also an escape for your listeners as well. And I'm going a little fast here. Oh, you got a clicker for me? Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> Maybe I 
initial sentence. Um, <laughs> um, there's a lot of nonprofits locally that they say, you know, I want to connect with a podcaster, and why is this, sorry guys, this is, this is live, you know? There you go. They want to connect with a podcast that's local. And you're wondering, like, well, why should I do this? Or maybe should I even tell people that I live local? They're going to bother me. Nonprofits, I'm going to say this, will pay, because they have a budget, to connect with podcasts that are going to keep and bring their message to different audiences. That's the reason why we have podcasts, right? We can have someone listening in Australia, someone listening in China. And sometimes local nonprofits don't get that. They might not have that visibility. So don't go shy on your local nonprofits. Got swag? So you see the shirt? Get up in means what's up in Spanish. And let's volunteer. So I'm saying basically, what's up? Let's volunteer. A lot of nonprofits want to connect with podcasts to create a swag. And you're probably wondering, like, why? Well, there's a lot of great taglines and catchy phrases that um, podcasters have. And of course, podcasts can always not only sell it on their platform, but also give a percentage back to that cause. So this is something I always say, like, if you have swag, we have a lot of swag as a nonprofit, because I'm just, I like to be swag, delicious. But <laughs> there's a lot of nonprofits that they don't know how to connect with their audience in different ways. So if it's a hat, if it's shoes, if it's whatever it is, if your phone cases, they want to connect with you. And we're gonna get in my presentation a little bit about monetizing, because it's super important, and how nonprofits will literally pay and they will hire you for these certain things. So, but I wanna stop right now and I wanna talk about the wisdom, which is what's in it for me. Because you're probably thinking like, okay, this all sounds great, but what's in it for me? That's the question you need to ask yourselves when you're doing a partnership with a nonprofit. The nonprofit's gonna ask, what will I learn? What, why is this partnership beneficial? What can I take from this? The listener's gonna think about, what will I enjoy the most? And I'm gonna give you concrete examples of how this works, because you're probably thinking like, well, I have a murder mystery. Uh, hey, at least I have a murder mystery podcast. How is this gonna work with a nonprofit? Oh, I got a good example for you. But um, I also have examples that will partner up where you're gonna say, this can actually be relevant to someone. Remember, your audiences are different from my audiences, so you always have to think about what works for you. Number six, okay, you guys remember the telethon? Raise your hand if you remember those telethons. Everybody knows the telethon. Do you know the tel telethons? You know telethons. <laughs> telethons, have you ever heard a, a, a podcast-a-thon? Mm, you better do that next week. <laughs> so basically, hosting a telethon with multiple guests, volunteers, and nonprofits, massive email generation idea. You get together with three more podcasts, and you get together and you say, you know what? We're going to find a nonprofit that we really want to help out as well. At the same time, you're speaking about the cause, but you're also promoting your podcast and why people should listen to your podcast. Of course, it has to be relevant. But this is a massive email generation idea. People can listen in. They don't have to listen in. They can come in at different times. Um, and I've seen people do like comedy on there. I've seen people do game trivia on there, like really cool things that are out of the box. And you know, Everybody has, everybody listens to podcasts and like they have like 30 seconds and then they're either there or they're not there. But if you think about it, if you have, if you mix up your podcast with all these different things, people are going to be like, wow, what are they going to do next? You want to be different. You don't want to be like in Spanish they say, which means Billy Bob and Joanne. You don't want to do that. You have to be you and your authentic self. So it's really important for you to think of different ways where you can spark it and make it fun. All right, create a co-brand. So a lot of podcasters, um, actually YouTube, it's, I, saw, I saw a trend with YouTube um, uh, creators doing this, but podcasters are getting on this because it also creates exposure to their, for them and what their passion is. And this is connecting with a, part, um, a nonprofit and doing like a grant or maybe adopting a classroom, a family, a back to school drive, or holidays. And I'm not saying you have to do your entire episode on this. These are little bits of pieces that you are giving back to social goods. I was just telling this gentleman, Chris, right? People over profits. You know, when you think about people with whatever you do creatively, it is going to come back 
way more and people are going to learn about you. And that's how, that's the reciprocity about giving. So co-grants is a really big thing. We actually have one in our nonprofit. So if you guys want to apply, we basically, it's called an impact micro grant. We give grants to people who are doing social good. We support them. If you're doing something in the community and you need some assistance, we got your back. You can apply for it. So you're not even there yet. All right, story outro. So raise your hand if you monetize your, uh, your podcast. Okay, outros, you do outros, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, what kind of outros do you do? Uh, well basically just kind of like read outros as far as. Like the end of your podcast when you're about to finish and then there's like a little snippet of like an advertising or something. Oh no, we do them at the beginning. You do them at the beginning. And, and during like the middle and of the In the middle, episode, have you ever done an outro? Uh, no. No. I do. You do outros. Why do you, you do yours? Um, well, I kind of choose like a music. Okay. To be honest with you, but I do advertisements as well. Nice. That's like I'll do one, one in the beginning, like mm -hmm. the we're first sponsors, yada yada yada. Whatever. Mm -hmm. One in the um, middle of mm -hmm. the podcast, and then like one in the end, and then the rest of the show. So I want you to try this. So yes, ma'am. I want you to try this technique. So the beginning of your podcast, I want you to have you have to have a really a great story though, because you got to get people to get to the end, right? And you talk about something like a hook. So let me give you an example. Um, oh God, I'm not good on on the spot examples. But <laughs> um, an example would be something where it's like, this happened to me last week and I almost feared for my life. I'm giving an example, it's not real. Or my neighbor, something blah, 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 blah. Of course, we're turning to it. The story is gonna be at the end of this podcast. Don't, don't. Don't forget. You do the outro with the mini of the of the little short story, and then it might have like a teaching, or it might have something you bringing them to your website or a call to action. So if you have an advertiser, it's a great way because advertisers love the beginning, but you got to get a hook in the beginning so that people go to the end because people won't go to the end. I was just telling my friend that um, I used to do my podcast we were like an hour long when I first started even 30 minutes. And I'm like, people are coming off at 11, 10 minutes. I need to shorten this up. So I started realizing of these little techniques that I would do. So now my podcast, I try to make them at least 15 minutes. But if I do an outro, I always start with an intro of, of a powerful, um, something powerful, either relatable for the me or the community, so that people can go ahead and read to the next, to the end. This is also inspired by the podcast, Beautiful Anonymous. Have you guys ever heard of him? It's, 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 um, he does this in his entire podcast, but he does a lot of outros that make you want to tune into the next one. And advertisers specifically want to be in an outro instead of the intro. So, and you can charge a little bit more. So go live and volunteer. Um, I always say do it for social good, not for Instagram, but one thing is that people don't, they always ask me as a volunteer nonprofit, they're like, how do I volunteer? Where can I volunteer? Can I volunteer? You can actually volunteer and do an episode while you're volunteering. It could be local, it could be anywhere, it, it, it could be video. Capture that and share it with people because people will be able to see like, oh wow, I can do this. I can actually go live and volunteer. I can actually get information from this podcaster. And the last one is my best friend email. You know, every listener should equal out to an email. Remember that. Every single listener. If you see of all the downloads and all everything that you have from your downloads and you know, people look at your followers, that should equal an email because the email is something that you can later nurture, monetize, and grow. So those are the 10, but I want to talk about uh, just a few about making that money because <laughs> I'm a nonprofit, and I always tell people, like, we need money to for our causes, but also as a podcast, I need, I need to fund this. So copy this strategy. These are, the, these are the exact ways I was telling you about actual nonprofits. So the first one is designing music services. I'm a nonprofit, and I physically hire people, and there's a lot of nonprofits that will hire another podcaster to do their design and music services. Why? Because they're more knowledgeable in that, and they probably know the space more. Uh, startup podcast services, huge. You can either do a DIY where they set it up like a, like a, in a box, you know, how, but not in a box, you know what I mean, like a DIY setup, or you can just give them startup advertising through your podcast. Email swap advertising, 
Uh, a comedic podcast swaps email advertising for nonprofits that help bring arts, including theater and dance, to children with Down syndrome. You see the connection? This is what I'm talking about, the power of it. And, and, it's, and it's crazy because you think about it and look at the quarterly promo calendar. The Mom Blogger podcast sets up a promo calendar with affordable opportunities for nonprofits that help educate people about child and sex trafficking. Oh, that's a typo. And child abuse. <laughs> But you see, you see the, I <laughs> know, I, I keep it real, okay, okay. I like um, that. Yeah, I can't help it. So, but do you see the connection? This mom blogger is like, I'm gonna be talking about why Johnny did this 50 times, but I'm also gonna talk about real life issues and how we as people can motivate and inspire people. Event host, the Women's Empowerment Podcast becomes a host for a yearly event while also partnering up with nonprofits that help women with second chances after being incarcerated. These are, there's a lot of, I can go on, you give me a nonprofit, a, a podcast, and I'll give you a nonprofit, because there's so many. This one is wild. It's a Miss Murder Mystery podcast. They did a two day intensive in a local town. They partnered with the nonprofit and authorities. They served as volunteers in an actual case. So they literally, this podcaster, he was like, no, I want to really saw like a real one in person. So they got some listeners, they paid like this retreat, and they went and they did this, but it was actually for an actual case. But you see, it's like social good. It's using your platform for social good. And you're like, where do I find these? Where do I find these nonprofits? So with nonprofits, it's a little sticky in the sense that you want to make sure that they're legit. Because a lot of people say they're a nonprofit. We have a volunteer dashboard, Facebook local, but this is the one you want right here. Candid.org. Every nonprofit that the government knows of that has been approved will be on candid.org. Hashtags are important because people are always talking about which nonprofits they're, you know, uh, they're you know, volunteering or they're donating, and also gives you an insight of your local ones as well. And then last but not least, I want to talk about how you really can support social good. Share, give, learn, and speak up. If you can take a screenshot of like, take a picture of this as well, and I want you to share this today. When you say that you are at PodFest, I want you to remind people to share which causes are important. Give, learn, and speak up, even if your voice shakes. We live in a world right now that is scary on some days, but we are all using our voices on our podcast. And the more we use our voice, the more we can advocate, the world just gets better and better, I'm telling you, because people need to feel like, wow, I can connect with that person, or I can connect with that situation. So enough of me talking. Any questions? Any questions <laughs> at all? Yes. Are any of you nonprofits, or you want to do business with nonprofits? Kind of. They're podcasters. Some of them are podcasters, and some of them are not. Oh, well, are you a nonprofit? I'm a nonprofit. Okay, I'm a podcast. podcast. There you go. <laughs> so you're I, a nonprofit. You're one of them. Yeah, very large. Nonprofit. So everything yeah. that I said, you can do it yeah. for yeah. an actual yeah. podcast. And what's your podcast about? Like, what well, is it? You the organization is called the National Forest Safety Institute. We're 25 okay. years old, been around a long time. We've grown a lot, but we got so big, we do, we do our own podcast. Love on it. On the subject. So Love we it. partner with other podcasters to share the message, you know. But uh, you're right about email. Everything we just said, I can tell you we do. That's the awesome. Email list, the, we have a membership list, we have awesome. portals. We have corporate sponsors, awesome. and so we just try to get our message out to other podcasters, of course. So how and about other podcasters? Yeah, right. how about volunteers? Same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your network of volunteers is it just in person, or you have virtual as all, well? All over. Um, awesome. Every well, everybody that works for the organization, outside of employees, of course, are volunteers. Awesome. The boards, all corporations. We've got a lot of focus. So but what? What she said is true. That's what I said. <laughs> I you guys are no, 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 absolutely. So what's one thing you would like to do differently in your podcast? Well, you again, our, we've been around mm -hmm. podcasting going into its fourth year. It's going to be a YouTube channel. It's grown a oh. lot. But there's a lot to know about non-for-profits mm -hmm. trying to get their message out. And we're unusual because we do a podcast. But a lot of corporations look for non-profits who are professional to help them get their message out through a podcast. And that's the, yeah. that's, that's the angle. You didn't mention yeah. But that's an important aspect is yeah. a lot of corporations have their own podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And they're looking for other podcasters to put on their program. Mm -hmm. And that's true. 
And, and it's interesting that you actually have a, you're, it's a nonprofit and a podcast. There's a lot of nonprofits that don't even want to go that route. They don't understand. They don't understand. They want to get the message. Say that again. They don't get it. They don't, well, most, most podcasters don't get it. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But you, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, so it's important to see, to, to understand that, like, they don't get it because they don't have, they're not in that space or right. they don't understand where to start or where to go. But corporate partnerships, he just mentioned, is a great thing as well because now we're talking about another level of email and also sponsorships with right. running your your nonprofit. That is correct. That's awesome. I gotta check your non your uh, both of it out. Mm -hmm. Gotta check it out. Yeah, it's called the Safety Matters. The Safety Matters show. Show. Yeah. Oh, that's easy to remember. That's and good. It's on Apple and Google. Oh, right. I'm gonna learn what you're talking about. I don't 